Now let's move on to our uh, second uh, speaker, which was from, from the Royal Institute of British Architects. He is the founder partner of Weston Williamson and Partners Architects and Urban Designers, which specializes in the design of sustainable communities based around well-designed public transport. WWNP won the Queen's Award for Exports in 2018, and Chris has also established design studios in Melbourne, Sydney, and Toronto, designing and delivering transport projects in the cities. He researches and writes extensively on the future of emerging travel technologies. Now let's hear out Chris sharing. Chris, you can start now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's fascinating to see how everybody around the world is tackling uh, the response to the pandemic. Uh, COVID, COVID has taught us all how small the world is. There are immense pressures on our planet through urbanisation and increased demands of food, water, warming, cooling and transport. When I was an architecture student in the 1970s, it was an issue then and it's even more serious now. I was 12 when Neil Armstrong walked on the moon and like many of my generation, I'm convinced that we can solve most, if not all of our problems through technology and innovation. There was criticism of Joe Biden recently for saying this, but Kennedy's speech in 1961 proved that we could put a man on the moon before the end of the decade. It showed what is possible with political will. We need the same political will internationally to combat climate change. Andrew and I formed Western Williamson in 1985, and one of our early projects was the Jubilee Line Station at London Bridge. There was a lot of refurbishment of magnificent 100 year old infrastructure, but just as important as the project, and we learned a lot from it, was the realisation that how a relatively modest cost of the project led to an amazing transformation of the east end of the city with significant redevelopment of disused industrial land providing housing and job opportunities close to the route of the Jubilee Line. But as well as those city shaping, we could see, appreciate the benefits of providing well-designed, safe, efficient public transport on our environment, attracting commuters out of their cars and onto more sustainable forms of public transport. I've always been fascinated by visions of the future. This is from the 1950s. There's some fantastic examples and it's interesting to see, uh, like the previous speakers, which ones will work and which ones won't. But how, how emerging technologies will change the way we travel is fascinating. This hyperloop is one possibility and, and we've been following the developments and this proposal linking Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne and Perth, some of the busiest air routes in the world. Hyperloop would be a much more energy efficient uh, way of traveling and sustainable. For the moment though, we are making the most of existing technologies to provide great public transport, such as Crossrail, a new east-west link using 200 meter long trains through the heart of London. This is 20% funded through levies on business and development opportunities. Um, this shows the north side of Paddington where we added a new ticket hall serving London Underground. So the connectivity through cities is a big issue. Um, in the distance, the structure cat continues to the new taxi drop off. Uh, this is the south side of Paddington where the taxis used to be. This used to be full of taxis belching out exhaust fumes. It's now a pedestrianised new urban place populated with shops, cafes, bars and restaurants. It's the integration of these activities as well as the provision of public transport which will bring passengers back onto a civilised transport system. And spilling light down into the ticket hall and the platforms, the canopy it is 140 meters long, um, allowing natural light and natural ventilation in, in a great environment. At the east end of London, um, about 13 miles away, 
uh, we're doing the other crossrail station at Woolwich, again integrating art and natural light and urban public space, encouraging people to leave their cars onto the crossrail system. And this is the master plan which the station feeds. Originally there wasn't going to be a station at Woolwich, but the owners of the site petitioned petition Parliament assisted by the local council and a new station was added, giving people choice of where to live and work. For many years, London, like many cities, attracted commuters into the centre, travelling in and out at, at, at different times of the day. With better transport, London is again becoming a true polycentric city, giving people a choice of where to live and work. London grew from a collection of villages into a single conurbation, and this trend is now reversing. This is happening in other cities too. So, this image okay. shows our proposal for fully, fully remove Chris, all private vehicles Chris, from Broadway in Manhattan, creating a wider farmer oasis, the length of the island. Other cities too are learning from London. This is Melbourne, where we are working with local architects and engineers to design and deliver a similar city shaping underground metro. This shows Arden Station, which will serve a new residential and commercial development on the edge of the city. And this is the central business district at Melbourne, creating these cathedral like spaces to encourage commuters to use the system. Sydney is also providing a new, so this slide hasn't changed Richard, I don't know why. Uh, Sydney is also providing a new metro system across the city, severing the reliance on private motor cars. For us, these are fantastic city shaping projects, but more importantly, encouraging growth, enabling more efficient, sustainable transport, defining and enhancing these cities. Um, if somebody can change my slide, please. Thanks. So that, that, that's the Melbourne Central Business District station. Uh, the two major projects in London, which are on hold because of the pandemic and the effect of the fair income uh, diminishing. Uh, the first is Crossrail 2, which will run north south through London. Uh, this image shows the second one, uh, which is Bakerloo Line Extension, which if anybody knows uh, the old Kent Road on the Monopoly board, the cheapest part of, of the Monopoly board, this will be significantly improved by better connectivity, helping to green the city and make it a more civilised place. Looking forward, I don't agree with the Blade Runner dystopian vision of the future. I see technology offering opportunities for a green and pleasant city. The next image shows our aspirations with a high speed station and associated commercial residential development at the heart of a green sustainable city with no privately owned cars. This is a two and a half kilometer diameter city for a million people, a zero carbon sustainable environment. In order to inform our vision of the future, we conduct research on current practice. As Steve Jobs said, you can't connect to the dots looking forward. You can only connect, connect them looking back. As people, we've changed very little over 2000 years, but the technology we use to work and to live, to entertain ourselves and to travel has changed dramatically and it'll be interesting to see um, over the next few decades how that technology will will change the way we travel between and within our cities. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, that is really impressive. Chris Williamson, a partner at Western Williamson and Partners UK. Chris is the founding partner of Western Williamson and Partners Architects and Urban Designers uh, who specialise in the design of sustainable communities based around well-designed public transport. WW plus B work includes the Jubilee Line London Bridge Station, Paddington and Woolwich for Crossrail, the Victoria Station upgrade, the East London Line and 10 stations for the Docklands Light Railway. 
um, WWP won the Queen's Award for Export in 2018, establishing design studios in Melbourne, Sydney and Toronto, designing and delivering city shaping transport projects in their cities. Chris has researched and written extensively on the subject of the future of travel, examining new and emerging technologies. Handing over to you, Chris. Um, COVID has taught us all how small the world is. All of us on this call all over the world face the same issues. There are pressures on our planet through urbanization and increased demands for food, water, warming, cooling and transport. When I was an architecture student in the 1970s, this was an issue and the issue is now made more serious. I was 12 when Neil Armstrong walked on the moon and like many of my generation, I'm convinced that we can solve most, if not all of our problems through technology and innovation. There's criticism of Joe Biden recently for saying this, but Kennedy's speech in 1961 that we would put a man on the moon before the end of the decade showed what is possible with political will. Andrew and I formed Western Williamson in 1985 and one of our early projects was the Jubilee Line station at London Bridge. For us it was like doing five projects in, in one and we really enjoyed the process of this kind of work. But just as important, we saw over the following few years just how for a relatively modest outlay for the cost of the project led to an amazing transformation of the East End of London with significant redevelopment of disused industrial land providing hot housing and job opportunities. Not only that, the, ship, the city shaping effects but we could appreciate the benefits of providing well-designed, safe, efficient public transport on our environment, attracting commuters out of their cars, the effects of transport, which contributes around a quarter of all carbon emissions, is having an increasingly dramatic effect on our physical and mental health. I've always been fascinated by visions of the future. This is from the 1950s. There's some fantastic examples. Uh, the technology we use at work and at home has transformed our lives enormously and we can we can just guess what that effect is going to be on the way that we're going to travel in the future. Hyperloop is one possibility. Uh, there are others, jetpacks and hoverboards, but we shouldn't be guided by what is possible, but by what is necessary. The question should be, how can we deliver safe, sustainable transport and if it's good then let's do that. For the moment we're making the most of existing technologies to provide great public transport such as Crossrail, a new east-west link underneath London. This is 25% funded through business and development opportunities. Uh, this is the north side of Paddington where we added a new ticket hall serving London and underground and to serve new residential and commercial opportunities on the north side and, and greater connectivity for the last mile of, a, of, a, of the city. This is the south side, which used to be full of cars and taxis, now pedestrianised, new urban space, populated with shop shops, cafes, bars and restaurants. It's the integration of these activities, as well as the transport, which will attract passengers back onto the system. This is the ticket hall looking up to the canopy in the previous image, giving clear sight lines and intuitive travel. The canopy is 140 meters long with an artwork embedded in the laminated glass. At the other end of London, at the East End, we're designing the Crossrail station at Woolwich, again integrating art and natural light and new urban public space encouraging people to leave their cars and take the crossrail trains 20 minutes to the West End and 10 minutes to Canary Wharf. This is the master plan which the station feeds. Originally there wasn't going to be a station at Woolwich but the owner of the site of the old Royal Arsenal petitioned Parliament assisted by the local council and the community and a new station was added and that the for, for, for many years, 
London, like many cities, has attracted commuters into the centre of the city and to the West End, travelling in in the morning and out in the evening. With better transport, London is again becoming a true polycentric city, giving people more choice of where to live and work. And this is happening in other cities too. This image shows our proposal to fully remove all private vehicles from Broadway in Manhattan, creating a quieter, calmer oasis, the length of Manhattan Island. There have been pandemics throughout history at the time of Leonardo and Michelangelo, Shakespeare and Christopher Wren, and each time the city has bounced back better. Other cities are learning from London's example. This is Melbourne, where we are working with local architects and engineers to design and deliver a similar city shaping underground metro. This shows Arden Station, which will serve a new residential commercial development. And this is the Central Business District Station at Melbourne, creating these cathedral-like spaces to encourage commuters to use the system. Sydney is also doing the same thing, promoting efficient, sustainable uh, public transport. There are two major projects in London which are on hold because of the pandemic and the effects on the fare income. The first is Crossrail 2, which runs will run north-south. And this example here, the Bakerloo line extension, which will improve the old Kent Road, which many of you might know is the cheapest part on the Monopoly board. And looking forward, I don't agree with the Blade Runner dystopian vision of the future. I see technology offering opportunities for green and pleasant cities. This shows our aspirations for a high speed station around a, a, a Todd in the middle of a Todd development. Um, and in order to inform our vision, we conducted extensive research in 10 major cities. As Steve Jobs said, you can't connect the dog dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. As people, we've changed very little over 2000 years but the technology we use has changed dramatically. And it's important that we look at how, what people tell us uh, in order to help design the future of a post COVID world. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for that.